I'm Greg Greenwood and welcome back to my studio. This video is part five of my fold forming series. We will learn how to air chase and air pierce. What is air chasing? It is an offshoot of the repose technique. Traditionally, the metal is held in position in an iron pitch bowl and hammered with dapping punches from the backside to push the convex relief outwards. The metal can be removed and remounted in the pitch to push any concave reliefs inward. The chasing is done usually from the front of the piece to define, sharpen, and decorate the reposade areas. The chasing tools can be dapping punches, liners, chisels, planishers, and matting tools. This is a beautiful and time-honored technique, but it is a messy and time-consuming process with limited three-dimensional results. Air chasing skips the pitch bowl and allows you to work in air, reducing production time and increasing the three-dimensional organic results. I'd like to start off by showing you the most common type of air chasing, and that's the organic at random fold and heavily textured look. And that all starts with our common fold, and we've done this many times before. Simply fold the metal over, and then we'll chuck it up in the vise. I don't want to put too much down in the vise. I want to leave as much above the vise as possible. That way we have more metal to work with. This piece of metal has been annealed, of course, so we can work on it very easily. And now that it's chucked up in the vise, if we start hammering on this piece of metal the way that it's folded, it will simply start flattening down and it'll go into what you've done before, the T-folds. What I want to do is I want to start hammering a, with my dapping tool all along the bottom edge here and put some slight dents into it on both sides. This will start work hardening this bottom part of the fold and it will help hold up the rest of the material when I start hammering on it. So let's take and we'll put a series of little dents along both sides of the fold here at the bottom. Now I have kind of a series of dents along the bottom and this will have work hardened this bottom section. So now I can stay, take and start hammering on the top section of the fold and start making some random dents in the fold. I'm going to be using my chasing hammer to hammer those areas down instead of using the dapping tool because it can slip off fairly easily and it's much faster with the chasing hammer. Now I have a series of random dents along the entire fold. Now we can start taking the um, chasing tools and start working these, these little folds and making them much tighter. I'll just take my dapping tool and just start working these folds and trying to tighten up these folds and make some other little indentations.
I'm just going to go ahead and I'll work this area up a lot more. I don't want to take your time up, but I'll start sharpening these edges up with the damping tools and we'll make them nice and clean and sharp and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, now I've work the details up with the smaller damping tools. I haven't put, really put any texture in this at all, just using the damping tools to kind of sharpen up these lined edges here. And we have a choice here. We can take and we can anneal this and lay it out flat and I'll show you what that looks like. Or we can go ahead and use it just this form right here for a piece of jewelry. Or when we do flatten it out, and we can take our hammer and flatten the whole piece, and this will give a real interesting texture that you can use on other parts of your jewelry. Let's go ahead and anneal this, and we'll unroll it here, and we'll take a look. Now that we've annealed this, we can open this up. And you can see that there's quite a quite an organic texture there. And we can use this the way that it is, or we can take and the rawhide mallet and hammer this down. I've added some textures to the piece and thrown a little liver of sulfur on it and give it a quick little polish just so you could see the details on this. And you can see that you could be cutting out little sections for any other pieces of jewelry or earrings, pendants, so on. Or you could use a long piece. It's just uh, an unlimited amount of what you can do with this air chasing, the organic method here. When air chasing, we can be limited to the width of the texturing that we're doing. This is our typical air chasing width here. And how do we get from here to here to even this width right here? Because we may need this for a particular type of design that we're working on that we need that extra width. How do we do that? When air chasing that extra width of texture, we obviously have to start off with a wider piece of metal. Normally, we would just take it and bend it and chuck it up into the vise. The problem is that leaves this area here really tall and not with a lot of support, even though we may go ahead and do that line of dents along the bottom here and work hard in this, it's still quite a bit of metal up here and we won't have a lot of control over that. How do we solve that problem to make sure that we can get texture down in this area of the metal? One of the ways I like to use is to use a piece of wood and put my piece of metal onto the wood and chuck the whole thing up into the vise. This leaves this area down here at the bottom nice and wide, and so I can be pushing in and texturing on this lower area without it collapsing onto itself. Now we have plenty of room to go ahead and put our dents along the side, just like we normally did, but now it's much wider down here. Let me just go through this and we'll see how that looks. One trick that I like to use too is after I've made my initial dents in the lower section here, I side a mandrel in and maneuver it around and push those areas out a little bit more. And that gives me a little bit more room to add texture into this lower section. You can slip a mandrel into the metal at any time during the air chasing process. This will help you expand that area and give you more room to add more texture.
anytime during this process you can take the metal out and re-anneal it. Obviously the metal is going through a lot of stress and is work hardening very quickly. Don't be afraid to re-anneal it. This will make your job much, much easier. Then also, after you have it out and it's annealed, if there's any areas that have kind of collapsed down and you'd like to push them out a little bit more, you can just simply take and push them with your hands, or you can take your chasing hammer and go in from the back and give it a few taps and that will push that metal on out so you can put more texture on it. Don't be afraid to anneal it, and you may have to do this several times during the process. Progressively use smaller damping tools and you can start refining those, those folds and the dents and the textures. As you can see, there's quite a bit of texture along the outside edges. By using that piece of wood, in there it has expanded that area out and we've been able to texture closer to the edges. Another method for making the texture across the entire sheet and making it nice and wide is to actually take and fold it two or three times and then blend the textures together. On the initial fold you want to go ahead and leave a longer leg on one side, then go ahead and do your texturing, and then move on and make another line, and then you can blend the textures. After the first round or course of texturing, move on and bend it over, leaving a longer leg on the one side, chuck it up in the vise, and do your texturing. This is where the type of vise that I'm using with the real small jaws comes in handy because if we were to chuck this up into the vise in a regular vise, we would be smashing this texture. But I can zoom in right along the very edge here and not disturb this texture. Now we have two rolls of texture and we can put in another row of texture right in this area here. Now we have three rows of texture that we can either blend together or it's kind of cool having these separated which might lead to an interesting design for a piece of jewelry. If you were going to be blending these together you can take and bend them on over and put them into the vise and then you can work the areas in between the two textured areas. Works out really well. This is also cool. Look at this. You might be able to even use this for, for a cuff. Just do a whole length of these textures and then fold it over for a cuff. Really cool idea and a fun texture. Air chasing does not always have to be that heavily textured, organic, formed look that we've explored so far. It can be very precision and precise, making interesting line shapes and forms, which will add a real visual interest to your jewelry. Let's take a look at some of these ideas using the air chasing techniques, but making them more precise and precision. Let's start off simple by making a simple line fold and we'll take the dapping tool and make a series of dents in the top of the line fold. It can be a good border for a piece of jewelry or an accent piece. Let's take this a little bit further.
Let's go for a serpentine shape with this one. Now that I have the basic serpentine shape, I can go ahead and stick it on the block of wood and then sharpen up all these edges. So you can see that putting it on the wood really made a nice base for me to come in with the flat chasing tool and flatten that whole area and make that edge nice and sharp. And there we have our serpentine air chased line with a little texture. Here's a serpentine line that took the trailing edges and just folded them back onto themselves so it gave that serpentine kind of a little ditch like feeling and then take a look at the back of this this is pretty interesting too a nice nice form here's a double line fold that has been air chased and using the same techniques as we just did on the serpentine line so it gives an interesting look to it. Again, you could use this for anything, for a cuff, a bracelet, a necklace, pendant, earrings, but gives a real nice controlled look. And this is the difference between the organic look and this controlled air chasing. Try getting control over the air chasing and see what you can do. This is a very handsome double line fold. Here's another double line fold. A little bit different interpretation than the last one with some nice textures down into the indentations. Don't forget about the wedge folds. This is a wedge fold that has been air chased has a lot of control over it, still has that organic look, but has real good control over the textures. Here's a wedge fold with a double line fold on the outside edges of that wedge fold. Make sure that you mix and match the techniques that you've learned so far in fold forming with the air chasing, gives it a real interesting and fun look. That's what will make your work distinctives from someone else's. Let's take the air chasing process one step further. I call it air piercing. This technique opens up and lightens the air chased metal without the use of a jeweler saw. I like to use a sharp punch and a chisel punch. Decide where you want the metal to be pierced and drive the punch through the metal. You can shape the hole with the punch or with a chisel punch. This gives nice, soft, organic edges to the holes, unlike the jeweler saw. By air piercing, you can give your projects a light, airy look very quickly. I hope this air chasing and piercing video has advanced your metalsmithing knowledge and given you a different perspective on your own work. I'm Greg Greenwood. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.